Hi friends, uh, welcome to follow up. Uh, let's have a look at problem 2771, longest non-decreasing subarray from two arrays. Uh, in this video, we're going to explain a solution based on dynamic programming. So actually, this problem is a typical application of the idea of dynamic programming. So here we are given two zero indexed integer arrays, nums one and nums two of length n. Uh, they have the same length. So let's define another zero indexed integer array, nums three of length n. So for each index i in the range from zero up to n minus one, we can assign either um, an element, corresponding element from the first array or the second array. So our task is to maximize the length of the longest non-decreasing subarray in num3 by choosing its value optimally. So we want to find the largest length. So here there's a note which uh, dis uh, describes the difference between subarray and subsequence. So we have three examples, right? So actually using our intuition, so it's very easy to understand the logic. For example, in example one, so the output is um, is two, right? So for uh, for example, um, so you can have this one, um, two two, right? So uh, so let's see if we first choose um, one, choose one, right, smallest one, and then we choose uh, uh, three or two, both, right? Uh, bo both are okay. So we have length two, right? Or you can, the last one is one from both uh, positions. So it's a smaller one. So we cannot extend the length. So the length, the largest length is two. Uh, in the second example, we can, in the first index, we choose a one. And in the second index, we choose two, right? In the third index, we choose three. Or we can choose two, the same. So then we get four. So we have one, two, three, four, right? So the length is four. So notice that, this is non-decreasing, right? So it can allow equal, right? So for this one, in the first position, we choose uh, one. Because here is one, here is two, we choose a smaller one. And then we can choose one. So one, one is still okay. Or two, two, or one, two, right? So the anyway, the length is two. The constraints or additional assumptions for the problem are the following. Uh, first, the length of the two lists are the same and uh, both are bound uh, they are uh, the number n is bounded above by 10 to the power 5 and the second uh, constraint is about the element range which is in uh, between 1 and 10 to the power 9 so this one is not that essential for the logic right so with that said let's look at the solution so here i'm going to write some annotation first or comments so here our strategy uh, will be dynamic programming, right? So let me use two um, DP uh, table, right? So uh, this one, right? So I'm going to interpret this one as the length of uh, longest um, non-decreasing uh, subarray uh, ending at nums uh, one i, right? Ending at this number. So similarly, we can have another table, right? So dp2i is the length of the longest non-decreasing subarray from the construction process ending at nums 2i, right? So afterwards, the return will be nothing but max of dp1, max of dp2, right? Then we choose the max of this two. So this is the overall logic. So now let's look at some details. So basically for this DP, we're going to use tabulation. So we're going to do DP initialization and DP update. So first let's get the N. So N is length of this nums um, one or two because they have the same length. So this is just for convenience. So now let's use uh, DP initialization. So for this, actually, we should also pay some attention. So in my first try, I used the wrong um, initialization just because it read too much. So it just uh, initialize is zero. Actually, it's not right. So here we are going to use one times n because a number itself 
is already uh, is always a valid one. So the length is at least one. So similarly, dp2 has one times m, right? So then dp10, the first one. So uh, now we don't need this, the, all right? So now we have this one. So this is the initialization. Now let's do dp update. So for the dp update, so because the first element is one, it's already set. So we're going to iterate for i in range one up to m minus one, right? So first we're going to uh, set this dp one i, right? So if nums one i is no less than nums uh, one i minus one, then at least we can extend one length, right? So this means that dp one i should be the max of dp one i in this uh, previous state and dp1 i minus 1 plus 1, right? So this is the maximum length ending at norms 1 i minus 1 because norms 1 i is no less than this map. So we can extend the one. So this is the one. So we also need another check. If norms 1 i is no less than norms 2 i minus 1, right? So it means that in the previous one, we can use norms 2 i minus 1. And then in this number, we can extend one. So this means dp1i should be max dp1i previous stage, and then dp2i minus one. So this is the length ending at norms two i minus one. Then we can extend by one. So this way we set up so dp1. So next also let's set up dp2i. Same thing, right? If norms two i is greater than or equal to norms two i minus one. Right. In other words, we can have dp2i equals max the previous state of this dp2. And then we can, from uh, ending at norms 2 i minus 1, then extend by 1. Uh, another one is norms 2i is no less than norms 1 i minus 1. In other words, in the previous one, we select this number, right? So the length any of that is dp1 and i minus 1. Then we can update dp2i to be the max dp1. Uh, let's write like this. dp2i, the previous stage. dp1, i minus 1, right? We extend by 1. So this is the dp update. So next, we just need to do the return. So for the return, as we mentioned, we're, so this max dp1 is if uh, the final ends at some position at the first norms. So we have this length. And then we have, similarly, we have dp2. Then we choose the larger one. So this actually forms the if solution format for this problem. So before we make any comments, let's first make a test. Yeah, it passes the first example. Now let's look at the generic case. Yeah, it passes all the generic cases. So here, actually, notice that there's a wrong answer. Actually, it's due to uh, initialization. So here, I actually wrote zero. So this is not a mistake. It's just write too, too many. So we just naturally write zero. And for this problem, we need to pay attention to this point. Actually, this wrong answer also tells us that when we do uh, dynamic programming, so the DP initialization is not trivial in some cases. We need to also need to pay attention to this small detail. So afterwards, so we do DP update. So this if block, the two if block set DP1, and this two if block set DP set up DP2, and then afterwards we just need to do the return according to the problem requirement. Actually, if you read this code, actually it's nothing but translating the problem statement into code format. So with that said, I guess that's it for this video. Thank you.